almost stabbed the eye. Well, folks, we're back. And this time we're taking on a true titan of the amusement park industry, AKA my other home park, Six Flags Great Adventure. 2024 is this park's 30th anniversary, and since I have just as much experience at Great Adventure as I do at Hershey Park, I figured it would be a good idea to take on this park next. Many say that Great Adventure is the best park in the Six Flags chain, well, is it? And how does it stack up to other big name parks that I will totally get to down the road? Let's find out. Now I'm gonna run things a little differently this time, as doing it by tier like I did last time kind of ruins the surprise factor. So this time we're going through the park in alphabetical order from maximum suspense. That said, I'm going to keep the general consensus top three for the end, and I'll reveal those names now so you won't be surprised when you find those names missing in the list. It's El Toro, King da Ka, and Nitro. Now those are based on what I think most people's top three are, and not necessarily my opinion. Coasters are not ordered within tiers, and at the end we will evaluate the current attractions using my patented coaster point average equation to determine how good Great Adventure's coaster lineup fares in comparison to other parks. Obviously, the Super Boomerang is still under construction at the time of this recording, but don't worry, I will keep you posted on that. And if you need a refresher on how the math works, take a look at my Hershey Park tier list and all will be explained there. Alright, let's go! But first, a public safety advisory. It seems that Celine Basul, the newly crowned not president of the Six Flags Mega Corporation, has threatened to paint the iconic Nitro Hypercoaster various shades of blue. My high-level connections in the biomedical engineering world have informed me that much like the Bond girls in Goldfinger, coating nitro with blue body paint may lead to asphyxiation and dangerous hyperthermia. Please like and subscribe to the channel to increase my clout so I may mobilize the biomed community to put a stop to this heinous coaster abuse and leave nitro the beautiful pink and yellow bastard it is always destined to be. Thank you. And we're starting things off strong with Batman the Ride, a classic B&M invert that comfortably lands in the high B tier. B for Batman, as you know. The Bat clones are everywhere, but that's not a bad thing. They are insanely forceful and super whippy rides. Five inversions, furious pacing, absolute chaos from drop to breaks. Few others can match the sheer power of a Bat clone. And it has less to offer than some of the more fleshed out inverts, but Batman still comfortably clears a number of custom inverts that should be better based on the stat line. See my invert tier list for more details. And next up we have the infamous defunct dueler Batman and Robin the Chiller. And this ride goes in... yeah, unfortunately I never got the chance to ride this unreliable yet iconic attraction, despite going to great adventure basically throughout its entire operating history. Not for lack of trying, mind you, but may it rest in peace. Batting third is the Dark Knight Indoor Wild Mouse Coaster, and honestly this is a pretty solid ride. B tier. At least since they got rid of the random deafening horn that would occasionally go off at completely random intervals and ruin my day. As of late, this wild mouse has been running near trimless and brings a good set of laterals and occasional airtime to match the solid for a Six Flags Park theming and immersion. Of course, it's still a wild mouse at the end of the day, but in my opinion, it's definitely worth a ride. Now we move from a cloned wild mouse to a cloned tallest roller coaster in the world, an attraction that is near and dear to my heart the legendary Arrow Mega Looper, the defunct Great American Scream Machine. Gasm was a fixture of my childhood and the ride that invited me into the park after my long journey with its opening clackety salvo. Given my strong opinions about Viper, you may have some ideas as to where I'm going to put this ride, but I will be honest with you, Gasm ends up in the high C tier. Gasm just wasn't as well made as his Californian counterpart. An absolutely brutal turn into the mid-course sticks out pretty strongly, but the ride as a whole was far rougher and less refined, especially in its later years. Still, most of my opinions about the Forces Mirror Viper is just with a slightly less chaotic first drop. The loops were absolutely savage, rip your face off good, and the second half contrasted the first half well with some awesome slithery hang time. I always gave it a ride whenever I visited in my younger days, and I always came off with a headache even if I did appreciate the prodigious display of force. Now would I take it over its replacement though? Well, let's find out. Yep, we've come to the controversial stand-up The Green Lantern, and folks, drum roll please, we have our first F-tier ride. 
Those familiar with my work are no doubt aware of my revulsion for the stand-up model, even after decades of trying to redeem it and figuring out how to ride it without crushing my balls. The whole premise of the ride is flawed from the start, sending crushing positive Gs up through your legs for a seemingly endless experience of pure torture. Every year I give the ride another shot, and every year I find myself enjoying that fun first drop and the solid vertical loop. But then every second afterward continually morphs into ever-growing horror. I'm begging for it to stop by the time you reach those final breaks, which doesn't even provide relief as you end up waiting on the brake run for five minutes as the ops try to dispatch the next train. The stand-up was not designed for humans in mind, and turning the ride into a long, positive-spilled looper is just the cherry on top of this shit heap. They replaced Gasm with this? Okay, rant over. Next up we have the absolutely towering Harley Quinn Crazy Train. This is a borderline pick at best. It's right on the edge of a family coaster, but it's still good enough to warrant a C in my opinion. It's just a really funny ride experience as an adult. The comically long trains are literally longer than the lift hill itself, and that leads to some shockingly powerful laterals as you're whipped around. Harley Quinn Crazy Train? More like Harley Quinn Lateral Machine. You'll be banging around the car like a pinball, and that's a compliment. It's still pretty uncomfortable to ride as an adult, but I'm not as ashamed to ride this coaster as I am some other kitty rides. Which brings us to a very adult coaster, the Jersey Devil Coaster. Now, some may consider this to be a top three attraction. I don't know, it's really controversial, let's not get into it, blah, blah, blah. Is it? In my opinion, it's in the conversation, A tier. I really dragged on opening day, but things have gotten much better since the ride broke in and they stopped trimming so hard at the mid-course. Now it offers great airtime throughout, and while the pacing is a bit slow by RMC standards, every element hits. I'm annoyed by the rolling station on a ride with trains this long that makes seat selection have a huge impact on the ride experience, the restraints suck, and it has gotten way too rough for a ride this new. But if you weren't a fan before, definitely come back and give the Jersey Devil a second chance. He's really upped his game. All right, now onto Joker, the free spin, and I'm going B tier here. These things get a lot more hate than they honestly deserve. I don't ride it much, because getting a locker for this thing is absolutely ridiculous. Whenever I do ride it, I genuinely enjoy the chaos of the ride experience. It flips a lot, and the flips manage to be comfortable enough while remaining forceful and disorienting. Don't sleep on these things. And next up, we have the OG Floorless Medusa. I used to adore this ride as a child, and then I thought it was pretty meh, but lately I've realized that I've been sleeping on this thing. It's a solid B tier. I love the pinch of hang time on the top of that loop, and the rest of the inversions are pretty whippy. It's still pretty damn comfy after all these years, while bringing a bit of that old school b and force. Unfortunately, the mid-course does murder that second half. I think that the layout of Green Lantern would honestly make for a better floor list, but I've grown a bit more positive in this formerly renamed, renamed ride as of late. Shout out to the OG floor list. Now it's time to pay our respects for another fallen comrade, the former dueling Woody Rolling Thunder. This classic park opening attraction was... alright. You can tell in its final years that it was on its last legs, it wasn't what anyone would call comfortable, but it was charming enough with some airtime, and the dueling element was executed pretty well. I really wish that RMC could have salvaged the structure. The thought of a dueling RMC hybrid intertwined with El Toro is just salivating. But oh well. And then we come to the Runaway Mine Train. I know some people hate this thing, but I sure as hell don't. B tier, almost entirely for that insane airtime hill over the water at the end. In the front of the train, that thing sends you absolutely flying with magnum level ejector. And the back car gives shockingly strong airtime basically throughout the layout. I know it's one of the jankiest arrows remaining, and that is saying something, but the jank adds to the charm. It's a friggin' mine train, after all. As the last arrow coaster remaining in this story park, I'm glad that the mine train can carry the torch with pride. Shine on, you crazy diamond. Almost to the top three now, let's move on to Skull Mountain, and this indoor coaster lands itself in the C-tier, based solely on the strength of that comically good first drop. Sit in the back car. Intamin seems incapable of not adding a crazy moment on every one of their rides, and Skull Mountain is no different. Yeah, the rest of the coaster is utterly boring, and they didn't do a good enough job to make it actually dark inside, but on a hot summer day when I'm about to pass out from heat stroke, you know I'm plopping my ass in the back row milking those first three seconds for all they're worth, baby. And finally, we have Superman Ultimate Flight. 
This b and flyer soars into the B tier with a solidly strong showing. Red alert, red alert. We've exceeded our B tier quota. I repeat, we've exceeded our B tier quota. Oh God, oh God, what am I gonna do? 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 It's a clone and it feels like it. Most of the layout is aimless wandering without much force, but I keep coming back for the absolutely crushing pretzel loop. This is the reason to ride, an insane element mixing disorientation with crushing and sustained positive g-forces before hopping up and sending you on your merry way. Superman feels like the Tommy DeVito of roller coasters. He'll scare the shit out of you for five seconds until he pulls back and lets you know he's, he's just messing around, everything is fine. Or was he? Alright, now what you've all been waiting for, it's time for the top three. We're going to start things off with Nitro, the legendary b &M Hyper. For a very, very long time, Nitro was my favorite coaster in the park and one of my favorite coasters overall. It remains my most ridden attraction by an untracked wide margin, but what do I think of it now? It's tough for me to say, but I have to put Nitro in the B tier. Yep. Another B tier? Are you kidding me? Nitro's just manningly inconsistent. Sometimes I'll get incredible rides that offer a decent floater the whole way through, and sometimes it feels like Walter and Claude forgot to add airtime in their hyper coaster. Outside of that first drop though, that always slaps. I aim to evaluate coasters based on their best rides because sometimes like you can't help it if you show up to the park on a cold day, but for Nitro it feels totally random. I've had 60 degree rides that hit way better than 90 degree scorchers. Even on its best days though, Nitro fails to deliver the airtime of newer hypers like Candy and Diamondback have to offer. Regardless, there are positives. The layout is awesome. Diving into the woods for the majority of the ride, the setting is great. That Helix offers some nice contrast with solid, sustained positive Gs. And it's always easy to get an acre of airtime room with this supremely comfortable B&M clamshell. Now I have a lot of sentimental attachment to this ride and maybe my opinions will change again like they have in the past, but I can't put Nitro higher than B. Sorry, buddy. If they paint it blue, it's dropping to C. Coming up in the number two spot is King to Ka, the last of the hydraulic launch strata coasters. With Dragster gone, Ka has taken up the reins as the king of the launch coasters. At least in America, don't get mad, I haven't been to Dubai. And I'm proud to say that it lives up to the hype. The launch on King to Ka never gets old. It feels like you're being shot out of a cannon and that initial yank is insane. The launch pulsing too is an awesome feeling that I think adds a little bit of extra character. Now King to Ka's speed is quite variable. It's another nitro case where sometimes you'll fly out of your seat over the top hat and sometimes you'll get nothing. And that all comes down to the whims of the hydraulic launch. But even when it is slower, it's worth it for that launch alone. It, yeah, it's over in 30 seconds, it's, it's a bit rattly, and it is the definition of a one-trick pony. But I can forgive all those minor inconveniences when I strap in and shoot down that launch track with the same ferocity it had 20 years ago. And finally, we have El Toro. And <laughs> was there ever a doubt? Of course the best Woody in the country ends up in the S tier. If you want my fully fleshed out opinions on the ride, I did make an elegy video a few months back that you should totally watch because it's a great video, but Toro's legend really speaks for itself. The first drop and the three big airtime hills offer some of the best ejector on the planet, bar none. It is unfortunate to witness Toro's precipitous decline firsthand. It was glass smooth when it opened and with each passing year the ride gets more and more rough, especially after these last shameful accidents. But I really do love this ride, and I hope if the merger goes through that the king of American woodies gets the loving care that it absolutely deserves. Uh, please watch the elegy video, I, I promise it's good. And that's it. Let's add up all our attractions together to get a coaster point average of 3.173. Oh wow, that's a... That, that's pretty low. I, I blame it on Green Lantern as we should. Comparing that to the 3.686 of Hershey Park, with the addition of Wildcat's Revenge, I think I do agree with the math. Both have comparatively strong top fives, but Hershey is more consistently good coasters all the way down. Great Adventure shouldn't be ashamed though, it is a great park, and I may have a little familiarity bias bringing down my opinions a little more. Is this the best Six Flags has to offer though? Tune in next time, and let's find out. Hey guys, so, uh, <laughs> I, uh th thank you, <laughs> th thank you so much. 
I I'm just kind of at a loss for words. Like, I haven't had a video this successful since, like, my third video, which I released over a year ago at this point, and I was kind of resigned to it never happening again, and just kind of making these videos out of my own sense of mental derangement. But it really means so much to me to see all the hard work finally pay off at the end, and let's just hope that it continues to be successful throughout the next year. I have a lot of fun videos in store for all of you in 2024, and I hope you will all join me along for the ride. And if this is your first time watching one of my videos, thank you for coming by. Please subscribe to the channel. I have a lot of interesting content down the pipe. And with a big video like this, I'm a lot closer to reaching monetization goals now, so it means the world to me if we can cross that thousand threshold and maybe start getting some cash in my pockets for all this effort. Anyways, as usual, thank you for watching. Craft cheddar cheese, craft cheddar cheese, the milk makes it better.